Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I greet everyone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, we are going to do a discipleship uh, lesson. I'm combining two topics because they go hand in hand. And one, one of the name explains the other. So I'm going to talk about both both uh, lesson. Jesus wants us to know the truth in this end time so that the truth set us free. Amen. God bless you. We are treating or we are talking and learning under the feet of Jesus. Today we are learning about bitterness and resentment. Bitterness and resentment. Amen. Because they work together. <laughs> what does the Bible say about bitterness? What does the Bible say about bitterness? So I may have to break the video in two. So I, I will do that if the, there's a need for it. Bitterness is a resentful cynicism that results in an intense antagonism or hostility towards others. The Bible teaches all believers, genuine Christians, born again, spirit filled Christians, to get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Amen. It thus goes on to tell us how to deal with such bitterness and its fruits by being kind and compassionate to one another and forgiving each other just as christ just as in christ god forgave you and and me uh, when you read the book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 that is what the word of god tell us Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 to 32. An adjective, <laughs> an adjective, the word bitter means sharp like an arrow or pungent to the taste, disagreeable, venomous, it's like a poison. Bitterness is poison. The idea is that of the poisonous water given to the women who were suspected of committing adultery in the book of Numbers chapter 18. You know, when you read Numbers chapter 18, uh, 5 verse 18, it says the bitter water that brings a curse. The bitter water that brings a curse. In its figurative sense, bitterness refers to a mental or a, an emotional state that corrodes, corrodes, C O R R O D E S corrodes or eat away at. So it's like a cancer. It's like a a canker. It's like a gangrene in the fingers. It eats away. It corrodes. Bitterness can affect one, someone experiencing profound grief, or anything which acts on the mind in the way poison acts on the body when someone is is uh bitten by a snake i haven't but i've heard so many of these stories when when you are bitten by a snake the poison starts eating up it start going it start connecting into the bloodstream into the veins arrows and in no time the person will die if they don't get if that that thing that is corroding, that is eating up, eating at, if it's not stabbed or nipped in the bud somewhere, it comes up, it comes to the heart, the person is dead. Bitterness is that state of mind which willfully, and the word is willfully, you know, from the person's own will, holds on to angry feelings, angry feelings ready to take offense, able to break out in anger at any moment. When someone is filled with bitterness, 
Anything and everything irritates them. Yeah. They get angry so easily. Everything irritates them. You know, it's like smelling or choking up by smoke. Everything irritates these people. They are filled with bitter. They are bitter in their heart and in their spirit, in their mind. A condition in the mind. So the foremost, the foremost danger in succumbing or being overcome by bitterness and allowing it to rule our heart is that it is a spirit that refuses reconciliation. It never want to forgive. It never want to forget, forgive or forget. Bitterness does that. So there are people that will say, I can forgive, but to forget, pa, I cannot forget. To really forget, I cannot forget. It's a runabout of saying, well, I've, I've still not forgiven you. Bitterness is at work. Bitterness. They refuse reconciliation. And so they can be at loggerheads with their sisters for years. And I mean years. They can be in the same house, go to the same church, and will not talk to each other. Bitterness has eaten in the heart. It has eaten, poisoned the whole heart. As a result, bitterness leads to wrath. Wrath. W-R-A-T-H. Wrath. Which is the explosion on the outside of the feelings on the inside. So the, 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 thing, the choice of words that come out of people like that, their mouth, it can kill a bird, a tiny bird. Such unbridled wrath and anger often lead to brawling, which is the brush self-absorption of an angry person who needs to make everyone hear his grievance. So such people, they pick at any words from anybody and they want to cause commotion. They want to fight. They want to cause riot. Any child of God who organize riot, who organize uh, what we call uh, people to demonstrate on, on streets with all kinds of devices and whatever not you can think of. Bitterness most of the times is eaten into their heart, has eaten into their hearts and spirits and mind. And they, they, they want to demonstrate, display it. These people are ready to always display it. Another evil brought on by bitterness is slander. Yep, slander. Slandering. And so because they are filled with slandering, and sometimes they will be slandering but in a very cunning way. So you might not know that they are, they are you know, slandering. They are, they are destroying, tarnishing the image of another person they they have that they are embittered about and so in a church you can see an elder slandering the pastor a deacon even a church member and a church member slandering leadership pastors and so forth uh, another member so as used in ephesians chapter 4 it is not referring to blaspheming against God or merely slander against men but to any speech any speech any word that come out that spring forth from anger out of anger and designed to wound and injure others you know when you in in a church there are many people there are many Christians all that they do is to go out there talk about their fellow brethren in, in the body of Christ. Every time they want to uh, depict or uh, tell other others about these particular people they are impeded about. Most time because maybe the person might have a gift, a talent that they, they are using in the house of God they don't have. And then out of jealousy, bitterness set in they start to eat like gangrene into their brain and they will start to tarnish the image. And so if someone has the gift of prophecy they don't have, they will be slandering the person. 
This is not of God. Every time you are the only person God talks to. You see the only person, you see the only person God talked to. Every day you come and stand, God said, God said. Even probably God didn't say anything. That is bitterness that has, that has wrapped the person's mind and heart. And now they are slandering, causing wound or injury to others. All this then leads to a spirit of malice. So you are on your bed, you are thinking the next evil, the next wicked thing to say about that sister, that brother, that pastor, that man of God. And this signifies evil-minded, evil-mindedness or feelings of intense hatred. It is a wicked spirit. This kind of attitude is sensual and devilish in its influences. It destroys churches. It destroys people. It's devilish. And a child of God must get rid of it. Malice is a deliberate attempt to harm another person. Deliberate. You know that what whatever you are saying is, is something, is, is, is just something your eyes saw. And, and you didn't think deep about it. You just want to say something. You just want to feel relevant. You just want people to know that you too, you are there. Why are they not looking your way? Why are they looking at this person's way? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Deliberate attempt to harm others. And then you begin to cook up. Even if, as we all have flaws, you begin to now look into the flaw of the other person. And to just talk about it. That is devilish. Therefore, every form of malice must be done away with. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 says, Every form of malice, every form of deliberate attempt to harm another person, get rid of it, sister, brother, get rid of it, auntie, mommy, get rid of it. Deliberate attempt to mess up your, your uh, stepdaughter, your stepson. You are always spewing nonsense into the husband, that man, because you didn't have children. You, you are always deliberately, things that the, the man's uh, children they've not done, you claim they've done. Beloved, if you have such attitude, always putting negativity in people's mind, you will never inherit the kingdom of God. You will never inherit the kingdom of God. You are not a heaven candidate. You need to repent immediately. The person who is bitter is often resentful. And that is the next thing I'm going to talk about right after this bitterness. I'm combining these two lessons because they go together. When they are bitter, in, uh, uh, they have that bitterness in their mind. Now they are taught everything is resentful. Hatred, pure hatred. Resentful, cynical. Cynical means like something really bad, evil. Harsh, cold, relentless, and unpleasant to be around. All oh, those who do that, they are unpleasant to be around because everything that is coming out of their mouth is that that seems to either glorify their own self or talk trash about other people. Everybody is not good. Everyone, they have something, something funny, something weird to say about somebody. You need to repent, sister. Brother, you need to repent. You will go to hellfire for it if you don't. Any expression of these characteristics is sin against God. If you are always harsh, always cold, always rude, always unpleasant. It's a sin against God. And anybody, any soul, any so-called believer who persists in them, who dwell in this act, who is always doing this, will never inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 talks about all these things. 
when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. It says sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like this. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, warns us, all of us, all believers, to see to it that no one misses the grace of God. We must see to it that nobody misses the grace of God and that no bitter root, and I repeat, no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. When that bitter root in you, you are bitter about your sister, your brother, and you are not able to voice it out, whatever it is, go to that person. Sister, you did me wrong. You did this. I didn't like it. I am very hurt inside. Rather than letting it in one day, two day, into the third day, now you are embittered. Anytime the person's name come into mind, you are so infuriated, you are frustrated, you are angry. And then you begin to talk rudely. You will fall short of the glory of God. You fall short immediately. God wills that his people live in love, joy, peace, and holiness. It is the will of God that we will live in love, in joy, in peace, and holiness. Not in bitterness. Never in bitterness. Therefore, the believer must always watch diligently. We all, we must watch out diligently, carefully. Being on guard against the grave peril of bitterness. So at this point, you will pray, Lord Jesus... Change my attitude before it is too late. Change my attitude before it is too late. I don't want to be embittered about anything and anybody. I do not want to uh, think malicious thoughts and everything about that sister, that brother, that I may live in love, joy, peace, and holiness. Without which nobody will see the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the next one. That is the, the, the sister, the twin of bitterness. What does the Bible say about resentment? Resentment. R-E-S-E-N-T. M-E-N-T. Resentment. It comes from a, a French word. And it literally means intense feeling. So in English, it is resent. The feeling of pain and indignation due to injustice or insult. The feeling of pain and indignation due to injustice or insult. Hallelujah. People may feel resentful when they are cheated on. So if you have a husband that is cheating on you, you may feel resentful. If you have a wife that is cheating on you, you may feel resentful. So people feel resentful when they are cheated on, when they are stolen from, or when they are lied to. See, if if, if, if your, your, your husband, your wife is, is always lying to you, you know they, they have something under their sleeve they are not telling you about. It may make you, you know, resent them may make you resent them in so many ways if they are cheating on you if an armed robber come to steal from you yes you are going to be resentful if not just stolen as an armed robbery but it can be in any form it can be in any form so resentment is often a reaction to being insulted or having one's errors or weaknesses exposed Amen. The reaction to being insulted or when 
one's reaction, uh, uh, errors, mistakes, or weaknesses is being exposed. Like a preacher, a pastor will be preaching, an elder will be preaching, somebody will be preaching in church. And then whatever the, the message is about is in line with whatever secret sin you are in. And then you be you become resentful. You be, be you begin to resent that that preacher, that person, thinking that probably someone has gossiped to them, told them about your your attitude or something. That is why he's preaching in that manner. So when your weakness or an error is being exposed, it can cause people to do that. Resentment can be directed at an action, like I just said. Or a statement, like I just said. So, someone making a statement like preaching or admonishing in general, then another person say, "Ah, this thing is for me. This this admonishment or advice is directed towards me. It's because I did this or I did that. That is why this person is saying that. And then they become resentful towards that person. They begin to resent them. Or a person often." An authority figure such as a parent or a teacher or God. People are resentful at God. And I remember very well when my daddy would wake us up early in the morning to go and do money devotion. I used to hate it. But I didn't like him at all for that. Sometimes you do something, you even with that money devotion, you come and whoop you with a belt to get up and Come and do morning devotion. I said, ah, is this morning devotion by force? You know? And so I used to resent him. I didn't know he was doing me good, but I thought he was depriving me of my sleep, my good rest. So, and, and, and then I used to hate some teachers too in school, back home in Ghana. Because the teachers, they will whip you. Not like in America, teachers cannot whip the students. Africa, they will whip you. Even when you are telling the right answer, he's whipping you. So you can have resentment towards a teacher, you know, for, for that action, for what they did to you. They did you wrong. It hurt you. I remember a teacher whipped me on my butt for, for about almost a week. I couldn't, I couldn't sit down. I couldn't put my butt down. It was so hurting. My butt probably was swollen. So I, sitting down was a, a problem for me. So resentment is the cheapest and least legitimate <laughs> form of anger. It is all emotion and no strength. All emotion. All emotion. So deep within you, you have that resentment towards that person. You may not act in any, you may not act, do any action, but you are hating on the person. You resent the person inwardly. Resentment can be sparked by perceived unfair treatment by another. Just like I, 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 I have given practical example. You know, resenting my teachers because they whipped me. Because that was an unfair treatment. It could be an injustice. Like not getting a deserved promotion. You may be at work. You know that this position was for you. And someone, a co-worker, who has been snitching behind your back, backbiting behind your back, always trying to receive the praise of the manager, get that position, that promotion. It can bring resentment in you. See, why did this person do that? You know I was in line for the promotion. Why would they bypass me? And that will be eating within you. Or it could be an insult. You know, someone just insulted you. Someone says something that really, really is an insult, cursing you out. Either way, resentment stems from a love of the things of the world and a lack of faith in God and his plan. Resentment stems from a love of the things of the world and the lack of faith in God's word and his plan. The faith in God and his plan. It is legitimate to recognize unfair treatment. When, when people do you wrong, whether at work, in your marriage, 
in every aspect of your is it's, it's okay to to speak out or voice out that these people did me wrong and even to do something about it that even at work if there's a higher authority that you could report to you know if there's a legitimate reason you know you have evidence or proof that indeed these people have been fair to you and your work policy is saying that you can report it then it's okay if you take that step the 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 right way of reporting that this is what has happened but it is not helpful to wallow in feelings of self righteous anger i will take that again it is not helpful to wallow in feelings of self righteous anger the bible is not concerned with the honor of human pride the scriptures that we read as believers is not concerned with the honor of human pride an intense emotional response to an otherwise harmless insult may show a lack of spiritual maturity and the love of self mm -hmm. i take that again an intense emotional response to an otherwise harmless insult may show a lack of spiritual maturity and the love of self why am i saying that why is it saying uh, a, a, a harmless insult like someone is preaching and you tend to individualize or personalize and say that this person is is probably curse, is cursing me is directed towards me because i had this conversation or that conversation with them some time ago or whatever is the situation may be this person is making that statement because he saw me or uh, that doing this or that that's why they are making this statement or reacting this way never you assume for people i keep saying this in all my statements never you assume what people are thinking some words may be obvious some action may be obvious but when you are spiritually matured you never take to heart most of these things you will never you will never take to heart and personalize people's statement and words and generalize it unless it's the word of god that is edifying your your body your soul your your growth in christ never you personalize anybody's statement whether it's your husband your wife your children anything and that's one thing the spirit of god has conditioned my heart to have that my husband will say something that i should have been so crazy about mad whatever i'll brush it off when maturity set in when spiritual maturity set in you are not easily moved angered by somebody's statement no matthew chapter 5 verse 38 to 39 you have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury an eye for eye and a tooth for tooth but i say but i say do not resist an evil person if someone slaps you on the right cheek offer the cheek the other cheek also so in other words jesus is saying that we must mature in him mature in him that if you see that your husband want to if you're a woman of god your husband want to go you know cause you to sin against your lord go the extra mile by not giving him the room to to make you fall from grace if he's saying words that will choke you saying words that insults you personally it, 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 it insults your personality it curses it makes you look down brush it off when maturity said you, you brush it off you let it go immediately the words came let come let it pass from one year to another let it go even at that point you show love you show love you brush it off and that's one thing i have learned about my mother I, growing up, I, I heard my daddy say statement here and there that to me, it wasn't pleasant for him to say that to my mommy. My mommy would laugh it off. And before I traveled to the United States, I, I called my mommy. I started and I said, Mama, you're a great woman. 
Why you don't get angry when daddy say this or that? You say, why should I get angry? That is, I have come to love him regardless of whatever he says. Why should I say that? See, when you mature in Christ in the word of God, you were never moved or persuaded in any way by anything or any words. Whether it's your husband, whether it's the man of God, many people get off, take offense, start resenting them, the minister, the man of God, the pastor, the elder, the, the pastor's wife, whatever. But when you when maturity sets in, you are never bothered about the pastor's wife statement, their action, reaction towards you, whatever. You are not moved by their their eye rolling, their tongues wagging, whatever. No. Beloved, as David, King David fled Jerusalem, he faced the curses and insult of a, a man called Shemaiah. Shemaiah. Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 5 to 8. Rather than respond with resentment towards Shemaiah, and instead of killing him, as was the king's right in verse 9, David chose the path of humility. His words are amazing. If he is cursing because the Lord said to him, Curse David, who can ask, Why do you do this? Verse 10 of 1 Samuel chapter 16. David avoided feelings of resentment by viewing the situation as from the Lord. Love, that was maturity right there. David was being chased by his own son, Absalom. He was fleeing Jerusalem. And he met somebody from the lineage of King Saul who was having resentment for David, bitterness about David and his household. And immediately he saw David, he started raining insults and abuse on, on the whole king, which his head could have been cut off. If David should have used his authority as a king, even one of his commanders, forgotten his name, he said, why should this dog stand before you and do this? Should I cut off his head? And David, David in fact, David, David rather was angry with that commander who said that. Say, are you the one to tell me what to do? If God wants this man to curse me, who am I to ask him why is he doing that? Let him do it. Let him, when you mature in the Lord, when you mature in the Lord and you see someone who wants to, make you fall from grace you go the extra mile with them if your husband wants you to fall from grace if your wife wants you to go the extra mile with them not condoning what they are doing but showing them much love deeper love and, and making them know that you are mature in christ other times people feel resentment when god allows or orchestrates an injustice in the course of ministry you know many pastors take offense you know, in the saints, in the souls, that the new converts and the other people who they started the ministry. It if we are serving God, we should be treated fairly, or so is the logic. You know, I, I'm doing God's work. Why should people hate me? Why should people curse me? Why is the members not supporting? Why are they not doing this? Whether you are doing God's work or whatever the situation is, that doesn't mean you cannot, you shouldn't face hardship. That doesn't mean the 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 the, the saints or uh, whatever it is cannot get angry at, at at you or anything. The enemy can enter into just like he entered into Judas Iscariot. But then it, there's an example in the Bible: Elijah, the prophet, who faced many hardships. Although he was a faithful servant of the Lord, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 10. Not to mention Job in the Bible. You know, Job faced hardship. His own friends, they 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 they, they bombarded him with negative words. Say you, you probably your sin has found you out, your secret sin. You were telling you were making yourself like you are holier than thou. But Job Job, Job, Job matured, was matured in the Lord. Jesus warned us of injustice in this fallen world. Jesus already warned us. He has already warned us. He said, if the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. Jesus has already warned us. 
So uh, the African Americans who will be causing riots and, and demonstration because a, a white police person shot a black guy down and all those things. The solution is never a riot. The solution is never demonstration. The solution is seeking God's face. The solution is coming to understand that we are living in a fallen world filled with injustice. So the young ones, the women, the, the women, you take the young ones, seek jobs, decent jobs, do what is right in the in the society. If the, the, the police has stopped you, this that's not the time to prove your right, your right. If you say hands up, hands up. Don't talk back. Be gentle, be calm, and be praying in your head. Mothers, teach your young men how to pray in situations like that. Jesus, save me. If this man has been sent by the devil to snatch my life, Jesus, save me. Godly way of dealing with injustice. Not the black life matters and blue life matters and pink life matters. All those things will never stop injustice in this fallen world. Jesus said, if the world hates you, know that he hated me first. Are you in Christ? Then learn, learn, learn what Jesus did. Learn the words, the encouragement, the advice from Jesus. Knowing injustice is a, is a fact of life. Should get past. Should get past. You know, circumvent resentment in our hearts. If you already, if you condition your mind that this world is filled with injustice, you get past resentment. You mature in Christ. I should, you know, keeping our eyes on a goal, on the goal of making heaven. Being treated unfairly is very painful, no doubt about it. But our heavenly rewards will, will be more than, you know, compensate. It will, it will compensate. For all the injustice done us. So don't seek justice here on earth. It will amount to nothing. If that person dies, he dies. No amount of justice will bring that dead life back. Matthew 5 verse 11 to 12. God blesses when you. He said God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you. And lie about you and say all sort of evil things against you because you are my followers. Verse 12 says, be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the Asian prophets were persecuted in the same way. In the same way. So Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 21 says, don't store up your treasures here on earth. Where moth eats, eat them and rust destroys them. And where thieves break in and steal, store your treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust cannot destroy, and thieves cannot, do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your heart will also be. So another situation that can foster resentment is when we are dishonored because of our personal sin. The Apostle Paul, I remember very well, Apostle Paul said, that young man who has slept with his father's uh, wife, get rid of him you know so that he let him face the, the the wrath let let him you know display talk about his sin openly so that at the end of the day his soul will, will be saved than he perishing in hellfire so he talks about a punishment when people sin punishment as in making everybody know that they have committed adultery they have done this or that in the church and then seizing them from doing other activities in the church till they come to full repentance and genuine repentance from what they've done. Now it's missing in the church, so everybody's in doing whatever they like. When you are dishonored because of your personal sin, it can cause you to resent people. But that shouldn't be. Being accused of, of a failing, of a failing, you failing in something, we are innocent of, it's injustice. We all know that. Being accused of sin, that we are guilty of can bring overwhelming shame and a goodly amount of denial. So sometimes the only way God can draw our attention to our sin when we are, 
you know into our our own self in secrets and everything you know that we are doing under the sun in this fallen world god want to draw attention to our sin and the, sometimes the way he, he does it is to expose our faults in public so don't resent don't be hateful when your 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 deeds is found out as the saying goes he loves us too much to leave us where we are we may dislike what god is speaking into our lives but resentment isn't going to help when god exposes our folly our foolishness we may not like it it may be uncomfortable because we feel disgraced or ashamed but being resentful at god and the god uh, men of god or the women of god who are to uh, make you go through that it's not going to help you instead when our sins have found us out according to numbers 32:23 but if you fail to keep your word then you you will have sinned against the lord and you may be sure that your sin will find you out so there's nothing hidden that will not be uncovered is what jesus said it is vital to admit we are wrong as a child of god always admit your wrongs that will make you make heaven when you make mistakes that moment repent always admit you are wrong no when you have done the wrong thing always admit that wrong is what i'm trying to say human pride is nothing compared to the true honor we receive when we we when he sanctify when the lord sanctify us first thessalonians 5:23 now may the lord may the may the god of peace make you holy in every way so god is 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 he want to make us holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless unto the the unto our lord jesus christ comes again so beloved in this earth that we are living in this fallen nature the blood of jesus and the spirit of god is trying to make us whole before god keep us blameless so when you fall into sin immediately repent get back on your feet and set yourself apart again don't wallow in your sin and don't be thinking that oh, god has not forgiven me i will die in my sin and all that nonsense just get up and accept your mistakes if you need to be publicly shamed accept that so that your soul will be saved on the great day of judgment than perish eternally in hell fire resentment is a passive weak emotion that has no place in a christian life don't give him no room don't give it no room if there is injustice we should deal with it through prayer and godly action at your workplace in your in your marriage deal with it through prayer and godly action communication try to communicate with the with the woman or the man whoever is at fault don't keep it in don't die with bitterness and resentment you go to hell fire for it please if there is there is insult we should concentrate on who we are in Christ and not place too much value on the cruel you know harsh words of others when someone is cursing you out when someone is insulting you abusing you with words think about who you are you are precious you are a holy nation a royal priesthood so if a stepmother says you are a prostitute you tell yourself me i'm not a prostitute i know i am a, a holy nation i am a royal priesthood even if you've done that act and you've repented have that condition your mind that i fell into sin i am out of it I'm still a child of God. Please emphasize on, on who you are in Christ rather than the cruel words, the harsh words, whatever it is that you think is too hateful you cannot let go. Whatever harsh or rude words your husband tell you, you must learn to let go. And please emphasize on who you are in Christ. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. They may not see you like that, but Christ see you as that. And if God allows us to be dishonored for the sake of sanctification, the best, least painful response is to repent and allow him to work in us. If 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 you do something that is wrong and and the authority in the ministry uh, uh 
talks about it publicly or openly. You need to be humble, repent from it, confess if they, they need be, and allow the Lord Jesus to work in you. I pray that we will get rid of all bitterness and resentment in us so that Christ will come and meet us as bride that, are, that is holy. Brides who are holy, sanctified, pure in his sight. May God help us all in Jesus' mighty name. I love you and Jesus loves you more. Amen.